Okay, the next step is we're going to replace the jug that we've been using to rinse out the system and then to check our flow meter with the jug that we're going to use to make our first calibration solution. The first thing we need to do though is, is make sure that this jug has relatively low counts. So we need to measure it before we add the spheres first. Okay, so we'll stop our flow, take the tubing out of this jug and just be careful to not touch this end of the tubing. We'll insert this tubing into the jug, the new jug, and set that on top. Okay. All right. And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to use the new beaker to catch the flow off this jug. What we're wanting to determine is, is how clean this jug is in terms of how low are the particle counts. But we also want to know how much water we extracted from this jug because this jug has approximately 3.785 liters of water in it and so when we make our solution we need to know how much volume is left in this jug after we check the counts to make sure we have low what we call blank water counts so we'll be catching the water in this container and we'll simply start the flow up get it back up to 80 milliliters per minute and now once we have it at 80 milliliters per minute we're just going to wait for a couple cycles and make sure that our counts are low. Okay, now, I, ideally, we would like to see less than 50 total counts. Um, you know, if you do have 60 or 70, that, that's okay. But certainly, if, 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 the if, the, if the water that you're trying to use for calibration has something like 100 counts or 200 counts, and especially if those counts are spread out through multiple channels, then the counts are a bit too excessive. We don't recommend you use it for calibration. We're going to be adding approximately, uh, making a, a high count solution of, of 1,000 or 2,000 particle counts for 2 micron particles. So a background count of 40 to 50 counts is relatively a low amount of background counts. Okay, here we see the total count. So we're, we're at approximately about 57 counts. So that's looking, that's looking better. Okay, so we'll go one more cycle. It's sampling right now. We'll give it one more cycle. And then we'll stop the flow once it's done sampling. All right, so just slightly higher counts than 50, but, that, but that's a good range to, to do the calibration with. What you will want to do is record these values just so that you know what the background counts are. Uh, so we have 43 counts in the 2 to 5, 9 counts in the 5 to 10, and 1 count in the 10 to 15. Okay, so now that we checked our blank water counts, we're going to stop the flow. And we are ready to see how much volume we used we can see that we have wasted approximately 200 mils. We don't have to be real exact, uh, but 200 mils is what we're going to use here. Now that we've completed the blank water check, if you're following along in the procedure, we are at section 7, which is determining how much of the PSL spheres we're going to be adding to our blank water. And the table shown on page 8 of the procedure, we're going to be doing a 2 micron calibration first we see how much we need to pipe it in. The jug was full at 3,785 milliliters and how much we need to pipe it in if we, if we took out 100 mils or if we took out 200 mils. In our case we used 200 mils so we have approximately 3,585 milliliters left and for that volume we need to add 14.3 microliters of the two micron spheres in order to get our counts up around 2,000 counts per milliliter which is where we want to have them when we're doing the two micron calibration. So we're going to take our two micron PSL spheres and the first thing that we need to do before we pipe at this into the jug is you need to gently stir the jugs for a bit of time. You can take these and, and set them into an ultrasonic bath for 60 seconds to kind of make sure the spheres are fully dispersed and, and, and uh, evenly dispersed into the bottle or you can just sit here and gently rotate the bottle of spheres for a few minutes. And what you're trying to really make sure of is that, is that the spheres are off the bottom of the bottle. If it sits there on a table for a long period of time, all the spheres will kind of settle out and stick to the bottom. What you don't want to do is take the jug and shake it vigorously. Um, that will introduce a lot of entrained air and can possibly throw off the uh, volume calculation. So just gently stir it for a few minutes to make sure the, the spheres are all dispersed. Okay, so we're going to attach our clean pipette tip to the end of the pipette. If you think this might be dirty, you can definitely rinse this with the flush water. 
then we're going to take our bottle of spheres, unscrew the green top, and we're going to use the green top to kind of leverage off the eyedropper tip. Okay, so that opens up the bottle for us. Okay. Now, we're going to set our micro pipette for 14.3 microliters, which was the volume that we determined from the table and the calibration procedure. Okay. And then we're going to take this tip and just quickly rinse off the tip. And then we're going to take the plunger on the, on the pipette, push it to the first stop, not the second stop, but the first stop. And then you're going to insert the pipette tip into the bottle. And if you look at the side here, you want to make sure you get the tip below the surface of the liquid. You don't want it at the very top where you might pull in air. So just get it fully submerged and then release the plunger. Now we're going to take our, our jug that we already checked. We're going to bring it down. And what I like to do is take the, the pipette and get it right against the edge of the tubing. And we're going to depress our plunger. What I don't want to do is, is, is stick the pipette tip into the water. I just depress the plunger all the way down to the second stop and let those the little bubbles that formed on the end of the pipette attach themselves to the tubing. So now all of my spheres are mostly attached to the end of that tubing there. And we'll just insert that into the jug. Okay, now we'll just kind of gently swirl around the tubing just to make sure we get the spheres off the tubing. Then we can remove that from the jug and just gently invert the jug a few times just to kind of help mix up the two micron spheres. The spheres will stay suspended um, for a very long time. The jug doesn't need continuous mixing. These, these two micron spheres stay in suspension for a long time. Uh, but occasionally, if you do let it sit there for, say, more than five or ten minutes, it's not a bad idea to, to put the top back on and then once again kind of agitate the jug to redisperse the spheres.